everybody, my name is Luke Marr and this is Hot Love Mode and today on Hot Love Mode we're coming to you with the fourth part of our Met Gala 2022 roast and review. This is the last part. I'm done talking about it. Very excited for May to be over. We have a year till it happens. This is the fourth part. We're just going to be doing the end of the alphabet for those that don't realize that these videos are alphabetical. But before we get any further into this Met Gala final roast and review, I want to say a huge shout out to today's sponsor who is ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN is the premier virtual private network service that keeps your data safe on top of giving you access to quality streaming content from all over the world. In case you were unaware, if you're not using a VPN, your digital data and information is up for grabs by just about anybody on the internet. I know. It's scary. ExpressVPN ensures that 100% of your data is safe when you connect to the internet through either its desktop or mobile applications, meaning no matter the device, you don't have to be looking over your shoulder. Now you can get three months of ExpressVPN for free by clicking the link in my description box below at expressvpn.com slash hot mode. And with your back being covered thanks to ExpressVPN's protection, you get to relax and stream content from all over the globe by connecting to the internet from a wide range of countries. It also doesn't hurt that I can watch my own favorite shows and movies at my leisure just by flicking through countries like I would channels. If you connect to Netflix from France, you can watch The Walking Dead or Crazy Rich Asians. Or if you connect from the UK, you can watch the first Monday in May if you'd like to see an inside look at how the Met Gala really works. As well as a Peter Lindbergh documentary, which I didn't even know existed, fashion staple of Marie Antoinette by Sofia Coppola. And those are just a few of the countries that you can access streaming services like Netflix from. If content isn't available in the United States, I always check if it's available in other parts of the world, so even I get to watch stuff I've never seen thanks to ExpressVPN. And don't limit yourself to Netflix. Accessing services not available in the United States, like BBC iPlayer, is possible too. And for those that don't even live in the US, you can access streaming sites like HBO Max or Hulu by connecting through the United States. So check out my link in the description box below to keep yourself safe and to unlock some amazing content with ExpressVPN. And with that, let's get on with the rest of the video. First up, we have Mark Rober. And listen, like what I said about the whole Bradley Cooper like bully hot people thing like yes this stands here it's a blue velvet suit with silky black lapels I think the pants are black which I'm also like Mark blue velvet Brunello Cuccinelli jacket we couldn't have done a velvet pant just spice it up a little bit the black patent leather shoes like I get it listen I understand like science king of YouTube were we gonna get like a moment from him no would I expect him to no should we have Yes. It's not like totally wrong, you know what I mean? We could have had like a very boxy, straight cut jacket and it would have definitely been not on theme, but at least with this, the way that the jacket falls away from itself, it has like a little bit of a, you know, 1880s feel to it. It's fine, it's uninteresting, it's blah, it's boring. I'm not giving straight men passes, although it's technically on theme to be boring for straight men for the Gilded Age, but I expect a little bit more of Mark. I should. I will. I do. And then we had Marquise Brownlee and he is wearing Berluti, which we love. Shout out Dark Glassberg. Getting the girls in it. Now this is a black jacket with silk lapels, a little black shirt, a black bow tie, black pants, leather shoes. Listen, again, is it really like fashion? No. Would I expect a tech YouTuber to do fashion? No, I should and I want to, but no, I have realistic expectations. I'm working on that with my therapist. Again, like Mark, there is that sort of cutaway of the jacket. Very, very low key. Again, I don't think it was like super duper intentional, but like I'm gonna give them points for it. Besides that, again, within the Gilded Age menswear thing, yes, technically like it's very low key, demure, subtle, fade into the background. Technically that's on theme. If Marquise and Mark come next year, step it up, please and thank you. Next up we have Maud Apatow and she is wearing Miu Miu. Now it's a black velvet off the shoulder dress. The straps are banded together on the bicep. And then we have what is essentially a sheer lace and polka dot, also fringed dress that sort of descends down from the bust line. It's not really that great at all. If you wanted to, you could be like, oh, Madame X, like Sergeant, da 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 da. The straps are here. Madame X, they're here. They're also like chains. So that's my thing is Mew Mew, we could have done a little chain. I know we could have. I know it could have happened. I think that's my general issue is, especially for Mew Mew, I think Emma Corrin is a great example of putting on 
a look that is referential and a moment. And I think Maud needs to talk to her stylist about that because evidently if Miu Miu was doing custom for others, you know, with intention, with referencing, it's not Miu Miu's fault. It's a you problem, Miss Maud. So I need you to Appa tell me why we did what we did because it's not great. We can fake it and be like, oh, fringe or oh, polka dots, you know, decorative elements. But in the context of the dress, not buying it. Next up we have Mia Reed and she's wearing Valentino. I believe that this is custom, although I think it's probably based on fall 2022. If it's not custom, I apologize. I looked for the runway look, I couldn't find it, but very obviously it's Valentino because Pure Palo's been pushing that bright neon pink. So it's a bralette with a high-waisted tight and then a sheer fishnet dress with pink embroidery all over it. It's in a turtleneck style. You know, those big Valentino pumps. I mean, like, no, it's not on theme at all. Again, we could say, oh, synthetic color. Neon, not really in the theme. And again, like mini dresses, solid 100 years. We've got to figure that out. Overall, listen, I want better for Mia Reed in this moment. We should have done fashion. We should have done over the top. We should have done gilded glamour. We didn't. We're just doing runway. And that's great for anywhere else but the mat. Next up is Michelle Yeoh and she's wearing Prabhu Gurung. And I love Michelle Yeoh. Like, if I am a stan of like one human on the face of the planet, it is this woman. And I'm disappointed because I don't think that it is on theme. And I also think that the fabric choice is hard. It's essentially a fitted strapless style with a mermaid sort of skirt at the bottom. And then from the straps that sort of come off of the strapless element, there is a cape that sort of flows out. But the thing is the cape, the way that it's lined, you can see all of the wrinkles and the crinkles in it, which is not great. And so I think that probably should have done something along the lines of incorporating a reference to the Gilded Age in that cape. Even if the lining was like embroidered with some sort of embroidery to reference the period or some sort of decorative elements or whatever, it would have just like done more. Not on theme and I feel bad for Michelle because she deserves so much better. I'm very sad, very angry. Next up is Mindy Kaling. She's also wearing custom Prabhu Gurung. It's a draped and gathered gown, which actually like honestly, out of the context of the Met Gala and the fact that like theme wise, I don't really think we hit. We, you know, we could go back to the dancer with the pleats, but I would say that this isn't really like pleating in the same context. It's more of like a micro pleat kind of gathered, you know, V&A experience to me. But I actually think it's a really nice dress. It looks really good on Mindy. Like I genuinely am like, oh, she looks very pretty. I like the color. I like the idea of like the swags coming off and the flowers on the straps, which feel like there are Gilded Age dresses with flowers on straps, but again, overarching, like there's not a Gilded Age reference really going on here at all. And so in that context, like not in theme, don't enjoy, no thank you, but any other context, like the dress, maybe it looks good. Can you tell I'm tired of this? Next up, we have MJ Rodriguez. She is wearing Moschino. It's essentially a halter neck sequined paillette gown. It starts off with like a little head hood that is silver and then sort of comes down and when it hits the pelvic area it's very like drop waisty in terms of color combination it goes gold and like again i get it gilded but like moschino one brand there's one brand that i really was like oh they'll go for it they did not so we're just we're just continuing the trend of like being not on theme this is just like a, it's honestly like a worse version of the addison ray dress to be completely honest because at least with the addison ray it was like oh broken mirror at least like that different but this is just paillette in silver and gold like we didn't even go gold all the way we didn't even do full gilded disappointment uninteresting, not fun, not good. Next up we have Naomi Campbell. She's wearing custom Burberry. It has a big crystallized little neckline, a bunch of Burberry horses and riders throughout. And then like a really bad waist seam, a little flared sleeve moment going on. It's just like a column gown with Burberry on top. Not interesting, not on theme, not moving and grooving, not delivering whatsoever. I need somebody to explain to me like what we were thinking, what we were thinking. Next up we have Nicola Peltz Beckham and she is wearing Valentino. Again, that PP pink, very bright fluorescent neon pink. It's an off the shoulder gown with that very U shaped scooped neckline. There's a lot of gathering going on. So it creates like texture throughout and the closer that you get to that U neckline, you can see that more and more, but as it fades out, it creates a sort of very sheer fan chiffon light flowy 
feeling, but overall again, like not on theme, at least with Lila Moss when we we're talking about that Burberry look, it was like there was a bodysuit and then there was the dress that fit and it had like a burlesque experience and this just, we, we didn't get that at all. And again, I just think for Valentino, it's like, I get it. We're doing pink. I love that. I'm happy for you. But like, where is the reference to the Gilded Age? Next up, we have Normani. Now she's wearing Christian Siriano and shockingly, I think this is pretty good. First things first, we'll start at the top. There's a hat. Thank God. It was like we were pulling teeth for hats this year. Listen, even if it's a little bit like big and over the top and it has the bow and it's maybe less of like a hat and more of like a headpiece that looks like a hat, at least it is referencing the Gilded Age. Hats were big. Hats were popular, everybody wore hats. It was a thing, the more pompous and over the top and ridiculous they were, the better. Essentially, Christian Siriano did a deconstructed sort of take, I would say, on the Gilded Age silhouette. It's essentially a bra which has big sort of puffy sleeves, very gigo sleeve, but there is no rest of the sleeve, sort of like a crop sleeve, which I will give in the sense of make the gigo sleeve modern. Not that difficult, not that hard. Christian Siriano can do it, anybody can. And then what happens is we have like a bare midriff, which again, is that Gilded Age? No, no, it's not, but it's modern. At least it's like taking those elements of the Gilded Age and giving it some modern flair. But when we get to this skirt, which is a high-waisted skirt, at least it has quite a bit of silhouette to it. It's essentially a gathered, layered, Poofs. They're kind of like large bubbles of fabric that are layered on top of each other. And so at first I was trying to figure out if there was like some sort of back element, you know what I mean? Like if there was a back to the dress that was protruding and sort of large. But what I think Siriano did here, instead of doing it on the back where you'd say, oh bustle, it seems like where Normani's left is, there is a flatness to it. So essentially, I think what they did, because I know that Normani and Christian Siriano worked together on this quite a bit, it feels like instead of it being on the back, the bustled element, they've shifted it to one side so it looks like it's on her left side. So the left side is that flat element of the bustle, the right side and the front and the back actually where the bustle sort of happens. So if you look at it from this way, essentially what they've done is they've rotated it by 90 degrees. I think that's actually smart. Of course I want to see like a beautiful bustle in the back, sure, but the modernization of it is to make it asymmetrical, make it interesting, and again you still have that emphasis, you still have silhouette, you still have very much so right side of Normani's skirt does protrude out quite far. It is quite big, it is quite bold. I think that they've smartly deconstructed and then reconstructed the bustle and elements of what I would say is like 1880s, 1890s dress in a more modern capability. And I think that they've done it actually shockingly well. So shout out Christian Siriano, shout out Normani. Who thought that I would say those words, but here I am. Next up we have Oscar Isaac and he's wearing Tom Brown. This is essentially just a dress of sorts, but it's a trompe l'oeil dress. So what it is is it's a dress and then it's sleeved and then it's motifed and sort of printed to look like it's a suit, but it's really just one flat sheath dress. What I will say is interesting about it is the fact that we can see a little bit of an angle where the jacket almost would come together at its closest point. We can see that that angle, it continues and fades away from itself and then fades to the back. I think what Tom Brown was doing here was essentially making a dress version of a university or morning suit of the period where it's still very much so in the silhouette, traditional menswear of the time period, but it's just done in a dress which is subverting the idea of menswear. It's still very subtle, it's still very demure, it's still very much so quiet and hush hush boring menswear in theory, but in practice it's a dress which would have been very controversial for the time, obviously. And I think that honestly, they've done a great job because they're still capturing the essence of menswear of the time period, but making it modern. Not that hard, not that difficult. Shout out Oscar Isaac and Tom Brown. Next up, we have Paloma El Cesar and she is wearing Coach. This is a custom look. It's essentially a corset top, which in the context, it has the wire hooks. It has the wire eyelets, which were a part of the period. It's That's what made corsets a lot more accessible to people and a lot easier to sort of get to fit people is these wire eyelets instead of having to loop and lace and put all of that sort of stuff in and tighten it. Here you just had 
the eyelets and you hook them on and you could hook them on yourself because it's in the front and it makes sense. So I respect that. And then it has a sort of garter that comes down. You can see the little garter strings. And then it's a lace skirt with little delicate embroidery. I weirdly enough, listen, do I think it's like so totally on theme? Absolutely hitting, not completely. But again, I think it's the modernization of the styles. Instead of doing very simple, weird lingerie and, and lace, we're doing the corset of the time period and making it outerwear, which making boudoir and lingerie styles outerwear is very much a modern concept, but that waist is very much so cinched. I wouldn't say it's completely like S shaped, but I do think we're definitely getting an hourglass figure from that corset. I think that the wire closures are very, very nice very subtle and niche nod to the period. But again, it's an important nod that nonetheless works. And then pairing it with a very stripped down skirt in lace, I'll take it. Lace still was very popular. People collected lace, people made lace, it, it was a thing. Overall, I think Paloma did a pretty decent job getting it done. It's a lot less bustle da 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 da, -da than one would want, but I think it's more so a focus on undergarments of the period rather than outerwear. Next up, we have Phoebe Bridgers wearing Jonathan Simkai. I'm disappointed about this. Phoebe essentially is wearing a halter silver gown full of embroidery. I just feel like we could have got Phoebe in like a moment. I feel like she is not afraid of like a fun fashion experience and this doesn't feel super fun. I get it like glam, but Phoebe could be glam at like anything else. And I'd be like, okay, cool different. I just feel like we could have went that one step further. I feel like Phoebe getting into like a theme wouldn't be a weird thing for her to do. I feel like it's something that she would enjoy. So I'm, I'm disappointed in the fact that it's just a very simple, very boring, very blah dress that could have been worn to anything else for the Met. Very sad. I just feel like there's some sort of weird, obscure skeleton reference from the Gilded Age that she could have dug up and Jonathan Simcoe could have dug up together. And we would have been like, oh my god, I love that. But no, we got blah, boring, uninteresting dress that random producer would have wore to the Oscars. And disappointing. That makes it worse. You know what I mean? When your parents were not mad at you, they're disappointed. Disappointed. Next up, we have Phoebe Dynever, and she is wearing Louis Vuitton. I'm not sure if this is custom or not. She is a Louis Vuitton ambassador, so I'm sure that this is like a, a reference and or a piece from an old runway that was sort of reworked. It's essentially a bra top with a sheer sort of panel. There's a large sort of lace peplum skirt situation right at the waist area that comes down. And from that flows just a skirt of polka dots. And I believe that there's some lace going on at the bottom with embroidery of some sort that's shiny and sequined or metallic or crystals that overall, it's just not great. Listen, if it's maybe a reference to like burlesque dancer costume or something in that range, like I'm wrong. But I just feel like instead of doing that peplum skirt where it flares, I think we should have just done it where it was draped. I understand that maybe over top of sheer, maybe we wouldn't think it works, but I feel like we could have draped in a sort of circular motion that lace around and it would have added some sort of element of interest, of intrigue, of referencing to the decorative styles of the period. It just feels like we wasted an opportunity by just doing what to me is like more or less a 1920s moment. Again, I get it, sustainability. I'd rather she had just done like a little Regency moment because I could have said, oh, Phoebe, she's referencing costume parties. Next up, we have Precious Lee. I would say in the same way as Paloma, this is most definitely a reference to lingerie of the period. It's a large, very much so, wasp waist corset with the wire closures, which again, period, bing, bang, boom, got it. But the rest of the dress is sheer. It's like a black, sheer turtleneck and then it sort of comes down into a skirt and as we can see it becomes full of golden paillettes. It's a custom Altazara look. I just feel like we could have done a little bit more in the skirt area to make it like a little bit more interesting and intriguing. I understand that for Joseph Altazara this seems to be like a very common thing. We'll talk about Rachel Brosnahan later but golden paillettes were like what I think he was doing. I just feel like we could have switched it up for Precious and sort of played into lingerie, boudoir, something of the period. Maybe instead of doing like a fitted skirt like that, done like a petticoat of some sort, maybe like a little bit of a baby crinoline or a crinolette or something just to like give it some intrigue and interest. I just don't think the Payette fitted skirt train situation really like is Gilded Age. I love the fact that we went for the corset. I think it's gorge. And again, I think the way that it wraps around and still sort of showcases the bust, great. I think that it fits her really, really well. Love, again, the reference to the sort of closures of the period, but the rest of the dress, 
is a flop. Next up, we have Kwana chasing horse, and she's wearing a probable gurung dress, but also a necklace by Lenise Omiyasu, who is a Native American artist and jewelry maker, which I'm very excited to talk about. So the dress isn't really, in my opinion, the main focus. It's pretty much just a gathered light blue chiffon dress with a curved neckline and crystallization at the neckline too. But most definitely, the necklace is the intriguing element. Now, listen, when I did my Gilded Age explanation video, I didn't get to include as many elements of the history as I would have liked to. And most definitely there is not any information about Native American culture during the period. But the really cool thing is Kwana is a Native American model and wanted to make sure that that was most definitely brought up throughout her look. She has said that this necklace is actually a reference to a Lakota dress that is found in the exhibit, which is true. There is an aspect of the exhibit that has Native American textile and sort of history. Necklace is a reference to that dress. So you can see that there's dentalium shells. There's also porcupine quills and tanned and smoked hide. So Kwana is most definitely on theme. Now dentalium shells, we can see if we look up close, if we zoom in at the neckline, we can see that those white cylindrical pieces that sort of are layered on top of each other in the jewelry, that's dentalium. And dentalium from my research is essentially a mollusk of some sorts that has been used by Native American communities in the Americas for quite some time. The porcupine quills also very much so exist throughout the piece. And then we can also see that there are these little, they look like bows of some sort, but those are actually meant to be representative of teepees, which again is really, really cool. I know I didn't talk a lot about jewelry throughout this whole series. Again, like I'm not a jewelry expert, but I think this specific piece of jewelry is a very interesting aspect of a lot of these looks, but this one in particular seems to be encrusted with so much meaning and so many references to Native American communities, Native American history, Native American culture. The Gilded Age, I don't believe, was an amazing time for Native American communities at all. I mean, with the expansion westward by white people to colonize the areas, it most definitely was a thing that allowed white people to continue colonization, to murder, to attack, to do horrible, 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 atrocious things to Native American communities all throughout the US. And those stories are being brought to the forefront of people's minds when we look at, talk about, and discuss the jewelry that's here. I'm a Sam. I think she's an icon. I think she's a legend. I think she's a star. She looks stunned. Next up, we have Rachel Brosnahan, and she is wearing Altazara gown. It's essentially a bra sort of style. It has a little string wrap around at the waist, and then it's a high-waisted skirt that falls into a large train. And again, like, see, when we're talking about Precious, and here, Rachel, you can see the paillettes are very much a reduce, reuse, recycle. I would say. If we want, we could be like, oh, the little strap on the waist or reference to a stomacher. I don't believe that. And overall, it's just kind of like a blah, boring and interesting gown again. Gilded. We get it. We understand. We looked it up. Lovely. Happy for you, but no. Nah. Next up is Regé Jean Page, and he is wearing Armani. <sighs> again, bully hot people. It's a blue velvet, just a suit jacket. And then there's little crystals at the lapels, which I like, again, in any other context, I'd be like, oh, cute, nice, into it. But yes, but no, it's just kind of blah. I feel like we could have played on something more. I feel like the suit jacket doesn't even really do the whole like flare around thing. I mean, like it's like a tiny little baby bit, but like not enough for the girls to love it. So thank you for being hot, but like no. Next up we have Riz Ahmed and he is wearing a custom look by 4S Designs. Now Riz had one of, again, like the more thoughtful look of the entire red carpet for the Met Gala. And essentially this look is made up of what looks like workwear shirt in blue, with little buttons, a white tank top, and then pants that are tucked into knee high sort of breech boots. Essentially the look is a reference to the working class of the Gilded Age, which nobody else really seemed to do in that sense. Maybe, you know, Cynthia Revo I would say in the same sort of way, but her reference I think falls back in history a little bit farther. But this was specifically about the people that made the rich people of the Gilded Age rich. You can find images of the working class when you look up the Gilded Age. I'll never forget in history class, like learning about children and like children working in factories, immigrant kids coming from all over the world, trying to make a living for their families as well as themselves and trials and tribulations, the conditions that people lived in, the working conditions people worked under and how if they were injured on the job because there was no safety precautions they were just thrown away like 
they weren't people. It's just a very, very interesting and important aspect of the Gilded Age that I think is not really talked about, especially when we're looking at like the Met and Gilded sort of glamour and all that aspect of it. So I appreciate the fact that Riz Ahmed brought that element to the carpet. And again, I think it does sort of fit in with the time period 100%. It's just not go to sort of gown or like a dressed up menswear with tuxedo and tailcoats and all of that. This is much more of like the Jacob Reese, how the other half lives aspect of the Gilded Age. And I think that's an important thing. Shout out Riz. Next up, we have Sabrina Carpenter and she's wearing a custom Paco Rabanne look. It's a bra top in sequins and a high waist skirt with large train in a gold sort of sequin. Listen, I get it. Like Paco Rabanne, chain mail, not exactly Gilded Age in that sense, but I don't think too many brands are. But again, Julian DeSena, Sabrina Carpenter, why not do like a bustle with <gasps> chain mail? <laughs> oh my God, that's crazy. Like you take a crinoline and then you in chain mail or paillettes or whatever, just to be on theme. I get it. Like it's a big train that fans out and all that sort of stuff, but it's just a gold top and a skirt. Not really it at all. That's unfortunate. And again, what we could have done is we could have taken the skirt and we could have just shrunk that train quite a bit and essentially just taken a bunch of different elements of chain mail and just layered it on top in the back and sort of scrunched it and sort of created a bustled effect. But alas, we did not. And that's the issue overall. Like if we, we can look at it from the back, there's no bustle, baby. Baby got no bustle. So we need to work on that. Next up is Sebastian Stan wearing Valentino. This was like a hot, like contested look of, is Sebastian on theme? No, Sebastian's not on theme. It's a wool coat over a tracksuit jacket, a front pleated pan and a t-shirt in hot pink. It's not on theme. It's just Valentino pink. No, no, not on theme. You know that straight men who are hot, get it together. You're a mess, you're a disaster, uninteresting. And guess what? The hotness will not stand, will not do what you want it to do. Next up, we have Shalom Harlow and she's wearing Ralph Warren. Now, this is a look from the fall 2022 collection, I believe. And essentially it's a strapless dress in a red silk that comes down towards the top of the hip. And then it's a black sheath skirt. The part of intrigue is the bow and tails at the back that create a train, but also it's like somewhat at least kind of partially like a bustle. Like it's not an actual bustle, obviously, but at least there's like an emphasis on the back. Like we're so desperate at this point that like any emphasis on the back, I will take. This Ralph Lauren look, technically no, but like in a modern sense, like it could pass. Next up is Sigourney Weaver, my cores fitted sequin gown, no bustle, no gigo sleeve, no decorative element, just sequins. No gilded glamour, just sequins. Uninteresting, boring, sad, depressing. I get it, listen, don't get it twisted. Like I love a Norman Norrell reference just as much as the other girls, but we have to evolve. Next up is Simone Ashley wearing Moschino. It's a, it's like a micro sequin bra top. It looks almost like a mosaic and it creates like a boob motif. It's a high-waisted skirt and a little black sort of sleeve. Not on theme. I'm not understanding. It's not on theme. Why are we not making things on theme? And again, like most kind of fall 2022 collection, I feel like is a good example of like crazy cookie over the top. Like we can do it. Why not do it with them? Next up, Sophie Turner, Louis Vuitton, custom. Also, she's pregnant. So like I get it. It's a black, what looks like pleated gown. And then it's filled with some sort of silver embellishments that sort of go across the clavicle area to the shoulders and then comes down and sort of creates like a faux waist thing. Listen, she's pregnant. I get it. Would I love like more drama? Yes, but like she's pregnant. We'll let it slide. It's fine. I understand. Wish it was a better look, most definitely, because like then the baby would have been serving too. Next up is Strome wearing Mozart, which is a brand I don't know anything about, but I love the look. It's fantastic. It's on theme. It's an Ulster coat. The Ulster coat was like a long coat that then had like a little short cape over top. Brilliant. Love the fact that it's in a nice little plaid in a light blue. And then the Ulster coat is sort of piped in this like delicate little silver embroidery. Like it's beautiful. Like I would wear that and be like, sorry, eight, good, it's done. The jewelry, it almost looks like a little cravat, even though it's jewelry. Like Germany wasn't even like dressed by a big brand. And I'm like, did it, did it to the umpteenth degree, delivered, put on a silver platter, put on a gilded platter, and then just said, here, you're welcome. Like it's fashion forward, it's chic, it's gilded age appropriate. And then to like 
finish it off. It's still very like demure menswear. It's not super crazy, campy, over the top. Strome, thank you. We appreciate this. Next up we have Sydney Sweeney wearing Tory Burch. It's a white look that, essentially it's a cocktail dress and then it has, you can see at the waist that sort of flounce. That's like an overskirt that's been tied over. I do wish that there was more of an emphasis on the back of the dress though. You know what I mean? Like when she got to the top of this stair, she essentially like took off this over train, like an overskirt. Why not just like do a bustle and then you're gonna shed it anyway. So like, why not just go for it? Why not like do crazy big bustle and then I'm done and I'm gonna go party. I don't know, like that's the thing I'm not understanding. This is so easy. Like you could have just done it and we didn't do it. I'm not understanding. Sydney, I'm not understanding Tory Burch. We zoom in close, we can see that like the bodice is very much so boned. So like, appreciate that, that's really cool. Love to see that. But I think the skirt, it just falls flat when it could have really been a moment. And then in reality, it's not even like she was gonna have to wear it all night. So like you could have just done it for the carpet and then moved on. Next up is SZA wearing Vivian Westwood. Now essentially it's a pink moiré silk gown. We can see that via the rippling of the silk. And essentially what she's done is paired a large hat with it. Thank you. And then we have a latex glove and a latex, I would say like a pant that falls into a shoe. So technically pant to shoe. Essentially it's just sort of a combination of black and pink. But what I think is really, really great about it is the back is bustled. Like, might not be a full sort of bustle, but there is volume that is specifically emphasized on the back. I think this is a great example of, well, not hard. I think it looks great. I think it fits the theme. I think the color is bright and vibrant. And yes, it's neon and everybody else that I've said is wearing neon pink. It's like, no, you're not on theme, but like she did a bustle and then she did a synthetic color. So I'm willing to give more. And again, I think the use of the latex as a way to play off of it gives a much more sort of sexy feeling to it. It's a different texture. It looks great. It looks nice. SZA, thank you. Appreciated. Wonderful. Gorgeous. Stunning. Iconic. All right, maybe not iconic, but like good. Next up, we have Taylor Hill wearing Miss Sohi. Again, a nice Miss Sohi moment. This look is from fall 20. 22, I believe. Essentially, this is the first time we're seeing it from the front, at least first time I'm seeing it from the front. Now it does have little floral embroidery at the strapless sort of top, and then below that sort of covering the waist is like fabric flowers, which listen, at the bust area, at the waist sort of area, at the body, I'll take a fake flower, you know what I mean? Like throw in a little portrait, a little reference to an old person. It was a thing. People wore fake flowers on their torso area. The sleeves, listen, it's a little off the shoulder moment, but like at least there's a sleeve. It's a little baby cocktail dress, very evidently, and there's a sort of large overskirt and the overskirt is full of floral embroidery, embroidery based on waves and crashing and all of that sort of stuff. If you want like a breakdown of the meaning of this look, go watch our fall 2022 Milan review. We broke down the whole collection. It's a great collection. We love to see it. Listen, is it really truly on theme? No, but like considering of all of the looks that we could have chosen from Miss Sohi, I think this is a good one because at least you have the artificial flowers at the waist area. So thank you, Taylor Hill. Not completely on theme, but we're not skewering young brands because we look at the brands that have money and we say flopperamas. Yikes. Next up, we have Tessa Thompson wearing Carolina Herrera. This is a custom look, I believe. It essentially looks like a large bone cocktail dress. So it's meant to like sort of elongate the corset, I would say, and sort of showcase again that under layer of gilded age dressing. And I think that's nice, I'll take that. And then what happens is we have a large sort of skirt that fans out from kind of the front, goes all the way around the back and creates like a bustle of sorts. Listen, we got the idea of it. You know what I mean? Like, we got the idea. Wes Gordon was like, listen, I'm gonna do something. And the something at least emphasizes the back. I think also, shockingly, there was so little tool, which is so weird, because the girls love tool. And now here, for the most part, they've not touched it. So at least with Wes Gordon's Carolina Herrera, we put an emphasis on the back. Shout out Tessa Thompson, shout out Carolina Herrera. We got something. Next up is Tayana Taylor, calling it now. One of the best looks of the Met Gala in total. It's a custom Iris Van Herpen gown. Would I say that this is like totally gilded age, da da da? No, but I do think it's a good melding of Iris Van Herpen house codes and gilded age dress. I would say this is much more 1890s than I would say 1870s, 1880s, but we have these large sort of panels that swoop in and out and curve and sort of make reference to biology or chemistry or some sort of science, which we love from Iris Van Herpen, but they create a gigot 
cut. They create a reference to the sleeves of the 1890s. <gasps> Oh my god, it's so hard to do that. That's so crazy. The other great thing about it is it's all still in the Iris Van Herpen sort of watercolor experience. You know what I mean? Like the whole motif is still very, very Iris Van Herpen. The sleeves are shockingly amazing. I know that they're not technically, you know, the continuation of the Gigo sleeve, but I do think that they add a little bit of intriguing drama and interest. What I said that they're like Gilded Age appropriate? No, but at the same time, we got a sleeve, so I'm gonna take it. Now we can see that there is not a bustle aspect of the dress because Tayana is like on the Met steps and you can see that it fits quite closely to the rear. So in that regard, listen, we got like a Gigo sleeve. I'm going to take that. I'm going to run with that. I'm going to be happy with it. And again, it's at least like Iris taking a piece of the Gilded Age and bringing it into the style. So Dove Cameron, Iris Van Herpen, bustle reference done beautifully. Tayana Taylor, Iris Van Herpen, 1890s, Gigo sleeve reference done beautifully. Next up is Thomas Doherty, and he is wearing Dior. My sweet prince. Wearing that little cravat. Looks stunning, you know what I mean? Like, it looks great. Like, it's just that really subtle little detail at the neck that you're like, wow. He looks like Paul Revere, but like, on theme. We love to see it. And I know Paul Revere is Mega 17, whatever. So love the cut of that waist jacket. Love the cut of the shirt. Love the cut of the swallowtail jacket. I think it's beautiful. The color, obviously, is a little bit more not black, which, was very much so a big color during the Gilded Age, but I think it's a nice way of sort of giving it that Kim Jones sort of lightness. And at the same time with Dior, gray, very much so, a color that is an iconic house code. Christian Dior loved to reference the Victorian period in terms of clothing and dress. And so to me, this is very much so a Christian Dior gray, which I love. And I think it's a nice subtle nod to the house while at the same time being within the structure silhouette menswear cut of the Gilded Age show. Thomas Doherty, Kim Jones, Dior, thank you. Next up is Vanessa Hudgens. She is wearing custom Moschino and essentially like there's a Gigo sleeve there, so points. It has, I would say a little bit more like Edwardian feelings, but I feel like we're splitting hairs at a certain point. I think it's just because it's the all black Edwardian element and then it's much more fitted, but you know, we can sit here and we can say hourglass figure 1890s, I will allow it. I think it does skew a little bit Edwardian vibes. Overall, I think it, it has a sleeve, it has a, it has a waist, it has a skirt, it has a hourglass figure, technically. I'll take it, I really can't. Next up is Venus Williams. She's wearing Chloe. This is a custom look. It's a black suit, jacket, and flared pant. And then underneath is a macrame bustier. Listen, I've done research. I was trying to figure out like if macrame was technically, you know, done during the Gilded Age Nothing from what I could see, none of the research that I did showed that as a thing. So technically, from my understanding, this is like not a um, theme. Sad, Venus. We wanted better. We wanted more. And the same with the Amy Schumer thing is like, I tried. I looked it up. I did my research. It wasn't there. If anybody knows about Gilded Age macrame, go off in the comments down below. But I wish we'd done a bit more. Then we had Winnie Harlow wearing Iris Van Herpen. I believe this is spring 20. 22 haute couture and if it's not spring 2022 then it's fall 2021 not on theme headpiece i'll give drama it's just not on theme you know what i mean like the collection had nothing to do with the gilded age it was like put out a year before the met gala i just think that in any other context they'd be like yes i love it because they do i think it's a great dress very interesting very amoebus just not for today thank you but no thank you and finally, the last person we will be discussing is Yahya Abdul Mateen II. Love it. Listen, I like the coat. I think it's great. I think the way that we did the little Tom Brown red, white, and blue stripe on the tails is stunning. Super cute. Look at that waistcoat. The way that it just sort of fits beautifully. It's a little bit awkward, a little bit double-breasted. We love to see it. The little white tie. Nice. The pants fit gorgeously. The boots and all works. Very solid, very nice, but it's still like a little bit dramatic. You know what I mean? Like we're taking menswear and we're doing like a bunch of gold pins on it. So at least it's like boring menswear of the period, Tom Brownified, and then adding little bits of like gilded gold. So sold. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. We appreciate you. So that is the end of this Met Gala roast and review, thank goodness. I'm very much so tired of talking about it. I'm sure you're all tired of looking at it. Let's do the best and the worst. So best, I'm gonna put Tayana Taylor in there. Oh, I'm gonna put SZA in there. I'm gonna put Strome. I'm gonna put, oh, Riz Ahmed. 
Yeah, put Thomas Doherty, Yahya, Paloma, and Oscar Isaac in there too. Oh, and Quana. That was a lot, but I like. As for the worst, Sydney Sweeney, because I feel like we could have just easily delivered. Michelle Yeoh, that was disappointing. Maude Apatow, very sad. Phoebe Bridgers, Bridget Jean Page. There was one thing that you guys asked me to do throughout this whole video series. You've been like, what would you have worn? If it was me, I would have went full McLean Victoriana drama. I probably would have been like, girls, if Miss Sarah Burton allowed me. I want a dome and coat, a la Jack the Ripper, but I want it like really sharp and really dramatic. And then what I would want is a little bumpster pant. You know what I mean? Like a little nice pubuck experience and then like a little white long cravat shirt that like just barely exposed that like strip so i do like high little cravat shirt with a nice little dolman that's sharp and cool and then the tiny little bit of pelvic exposure and then a nice tailored bumpster pant hope that like they put wires in the end of the dolman coat so it would flare up just like a little bit so you could see like the crack of my ass and then like a nice you know victorian Gilded Age reference boot, and I'd be sold, be happy, live my best life. Would that be hard to deliver? I don't know, but that's what I'd want. So that is the end of today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching again. Go watch part one and two and three and the explanation of the Gilded Age. Thank you so much for watching and TTYL.